In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Novation Launchpad as a microtonal keyboard and chord player with the Oddsound MTS ESP suite. The standard piano keyboard can be ill-suited to exploring and working with different tuning systems. Various designs for microtonal MIDI controllers have appeared over the years, however pricing and availability mean that there is no current dedicated, widely available, low-cost option. The grid of the Launchpad may not be as optimal as a design specific to microtonal work, but it can go a long way in breaking free of the 12-note structure of the piano keyboard, with a low entry cost for those wishing to experiment. The MTS ESP Master plugin includes a script that will work with most Launchpad models. However, the Launchpad Mark II and Launchpad Mini Mark I and Mini Mark II models are not currently supported. The Launchpad X, Pro and Pro Mark III models work best as they have velocity and pressure sensitive pads, but the Mini Mark III, Mark I and S are also supported. The layout shown in this video is the same for all supported models, with the exception of the Launchpad Pro Mark III, which has the arrow buttons at the top left in a different arrangement. These diagrams can be found in the MTS ESP Master User Guide. Connect your launchpad to your computer and launch your DAW. Before opening MTS ESP Master, it is a good idea to make sure that the launchpad is not set up as a controller for your DAW and that the MIDI ports that MTS ESP Master will use to communicate with it are completely disabled. Some launchpad models expose more than one set of MIDI ports over the USB connection. For the X, Mini Mark III and Pro Mark III models, it is the ports labelled with MIDI in and MIDI out that need to be disabled. For the Pro model, disable the MIDI in 2 and MIDI out 2 ports. Ableton Live will automatically search for a connected launchpad every time it starts. To avoid this, select the ports in a row in Live's control surface preferences, but leave the controller set to none. With this done, open an instance of MTS ESP Master and go to the MIDI options on the setup page. Choose your launchpad model and then set the grid controller MIDI input and output ports to send and receive data from the launchpad using the same ports that we disabled earlier. Next, set where MIDI notes will be sent to when you trigger them from the pads with the grid controller MIDI out option. If set to host, notes will be sent directly out of the MTS ESP master plugin and you will have to route them to other plugins or devices within your DAW. This may involve a complex routing setup, so a better option may be to use a virtual MIDI port. On OSX, this can be done with the IAC or Inter-Application Communication MIDI driver. Open Audio MIDI Setup and open the MIDI page. Double-click on the IAC driver and add a port. It might be a good idea to rename it Launchpad MTS ESP. Ensure Devices Online is checked and click Apply, then quit Audio MIDI Setup. Windows doesn't offer a native equivalent to the IAC driver, but there are third-party virtual MIDI drivers that function in the same way. We recommend Loop B1 from nerds.de, which is free for non-commercial use and inexpensive if a license for commercial use is required. With the virtual MIDI port set up and running, go back to your DAW and set it as the grid controller out in MTS ESP Master. In the MIDI settings for your DAW, set it as a MIDI input. The launchpad will now trigger whichever track is currently record enabled without any routing needed within the DAW itself. The 64 pad grid plays notes. The map start pads light up green, corresponding to the green map start keys on the keyboard in MTS ESP Master. Any currently playing notes light orange, including MIDI notes that are routed into MTS ESP Master. Use the up and down arrow buttons to shift the grid up and down by the map size, analogous to octave transposition on a standard keyboard. Use the left and right arrow buttons to transpose by a single step. Pads will turn red to indicate the upper and lower limits of the MIDI note range if you transpose up or down too far. Also, any keys that are unmapped in MTS ESP Master will light red. Press the up and down arrows together to reset the lower left hand pad to the map start key as set in MTS ESP Master. By default, the pads will be sequentially mapped, 
each pad playing one note above the one to its left. You can however change this and select a different isomorphic layout. Press and hold the left and right arrow buttons. The grid will light up, with the single red pad indicating the current isomorphic layout. The number of pads from the left hand side represents the number of notes between adjacent pads in a row. The number of pads from the bottom represents the number of notes between adjacent pads in a column. With the top left pad selected as shown, moving one pad left will jump one note, as the selected pad is just one pad along from the left. Moving one pad up will jump eight notes, as the red pad is eight pads up from the bottom. Let's look at another example, selecting the pad third from left and sixth from the bottom. Now moving one pad left will jump three notes and moving one pad up will jump six notes. Choosing a different isomorphic layout can be a good way of discovering and playing chords, as the notes will be clustered together rather than spread out over the grid. The Launchpad script contains a chord memory function. The eight buttons on the left hand side can each hold and trigger a chord. There are three banks of chords available, switched using these buttons in the top row, for a total of 24 chords. Press and hold one or more pads on the grid to trigger some notes, then press a chord memory button to store the chord. The chord memory button will light to show it has notes stored in it. Press it to hear the chord, or press and hold to add or remove notes from the chord. The chord bank buttons at the top double as cut, copy and paste functions whilst a chord memory button is held, so that you can copy and modify an existing chord or quickly clear a chord memory. Whilst a chord memory button is held, you can use the arrow buttons to transpose the chord by a single step with the left and right arrows. With the Launchpad Pro Mark III only, the up and down arrows can also be used to transpose a chord by a whole mapping period. Chords are stored with the active scale in MTS ESP Master. If you create a copy of the scale in the scale list, the stored chords will also copy with it. Pressing the top right button above the grid enters chord mode. The note grid is reduced in size and the bottom three rows trigger chords stored in the chord memory banks. The bottom row is mapped to chord bank A, with chord bank B above it and C above that. It is possible to trigger chords and play notes in the grid simultaneously, with velocity and pressure sensitivity for the models that support it. It is possible to latch a chord, meaning it will be triggered whenever you press a pad in the note grid, with the pressed pad as the root. Hold any chord memory button or, if in chord mode, any chord pad, then press the up arrow to latch the chord. To clear the latch, hold any chord memory button or chord pad and press the down arrow. On the Launchpad Pro Mark III, the third and fourth buttons from left above the grid are used to set and clear the latch 